Hello and welcome to a new decade and the last video in our compositing series in Blender. Today we're going to be rendering our animation and then compositing it to make it look realistic. But before we go ahead and hop into Blender, I just want to let you guys know that my short film that I've been working on for over a year has just been released and you can check it out at that link. All right, so here I have pulled up the project file from the last video, exactly how we left it. And we've got our materials, we've got our lighting, and we're basically all set to render now. And rendering things in Blender can take a notoriously long amount of time, but I have some tips that will make it go a lot faster. First off, make sure you are running at least Blender 2.81. That will uh, give you uh, the access to a denoising node, which will allow us to speed up render times immensely. So go to blender.org, make sure you download the latest version of Blender to do this. All right, once you've done that, go ahead and sit, go up to file and click save as and save a copy of your run file before we start rendering, just so if anything gets messed up, you can always go back to this um, backup. All right, so first go ahead and go over to the render tab and make sure that the device is set to GPU if you have a GPU. If you don't have a graphics card, just leave this on CPU, but if you do have a graphics card, be sure to go over to your preferences. So edit, preferences, go to system and choose CUDA. And if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, it will show up there. Okay, now down here under sampling, under the render samples, this is basically will be the, the highest determining factor for the quality of your render. Um, it used to be that we have to put this to thousands of samples to be able to get a usable image, but with the new denoising node in Blender, we don't have to put this nearly as high. The higher you put it, the longer it will take, but the lesser grain will be in your image, or noise would be a better term for it. So I'm going to go ahead and set my samples to 200. I think that will be plenty for what we're doing. Also make sure motion blur is enabled and under the film section, turn on transparent and transparent glass. And if you are using a graphics card, be sure to go down under performance and change the tiles X, Y to 256 by 256. That will give the best performance for your graphics card. But if you're not, just leave that alone. Next, go to the output properties and make sure your resolution percent is set to 100% and your resolution matches the resolution of your video, it should already be like that, but just make sure it's set to 100%. Now, if you're going to render this in one pass under output, you should click this folder icon and find out where you wanna save your image sequence because we're gonna render this in an image sequence, uh, but we actually don't necessarily have to do this right now because we're gonna be setting up our own file pass later for each individual pass. Because the way we're gonna render this is we're gonna have one pass that will just be the car and then another pass or layer that will just be the shadow. That way we can have more control over each individual element when we go to composite. So we can leave this alone for now, but make sure the file format is set to PNG. Next, go down to the uh, viewer layer property panel. And what you want to do is make sure that um, denoising data is checked. That's very important. Now, keep in mind, this is different than the denoising setting at the bottom of the panel. We don't want that enabled. This check mark is for the old way of denoising in the older versions of Blender, but we don't want to use that. We want to use denoising data. So make sure that's checked and also go to the top right hand of your window and under the viewer layer section right here, click the drop down and change it to background and also click denoising data because this panel will only change the settings on whatever current view layer we have. The way Blender works is you can have different viewer layers and you can adjust the settings on each one of them individually, which is pretty cool. And we'll actually be using that later to create our separate passes. But make sure that denoising data is checked for both the background as well as the foreground. All right, now go ahead and just pick a random frame of your video. I'm just gonna do the very first frame as a test here and go ahead and go up to, well, first of all, save your project file and then go up to render and click render image not render animation because we're just doing a single render image here just as sort of a test. And that will bring up a new window. Now, as you can see, this is going to take a very long time. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the X button right up here to close this out and then close out the window. And we're gonna go back over to our output properties and change the resolution to 50% just temporarily so we can uh, sort of get a preview of what a render will look like. And I'm also going to go to my samples page on the render tab and turn that down to 80. Again, this is not going to be our final setting. This is just to get a quick preview. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and hit render, render image again. So as you can see, it will go through and render the parts of the image that need to be rendered. And this empty space out here, which is transparent, it will just skip over. All right, now as you can see, it's finished the foreground and now it's doing the background or the shadow pass. All right, so our preview render has finished. And as you can see, we have this slight issue going on here where we're having some weird dark shadows on our shadow catcher plane. Um, and that's actually being cast from the plane we created to sort of shade the car. That's this plane right here that is causing that. So to fix this issue, 
we still want the car to be the back of the car to be you know in shade because that's really important but we also don't want the shadows to we don't want to see those extra shadows cast on our plane because it's creating that really weird artifact so what we're going to do is render the car by itself with the shade plane enabled but then when we go to render the shadow catcher with our shadows we're going to disable this plane so we don't get those extra shadows but first we're going to go ahead and render just the car so if you click the compositing tab up here it'll bring up all of our nodes for compositing okay so what we want to do is go ahead and isolate the output from this render layer which is our foreground and send all those images to a folder so i'm going to go ahead and hit shift a to add a new node hit search and i'm going to search for file output and place that down and then i'm going to hit the folder icon and then i'm going to create a new folder wherever i want i'm going to call it render images then inside of that i'm going to create a new folder i'm going to call it car and then double click on that and then hit accept so now we're going to take the image from our render layer node and put that into our file output node so that way when we render it it will save all of the images to that location but in between these nodes we want to go ahead and add our denoiser node so hit shift a hit search and then type in denoiser add that in and take the denoising normal from the render layers put that into the normal input of the denoise and the denoising albedo and put that into the albedo input of the denoise node this will take that denoising data we enabled earlier run it through this node and allow it to clean up a lot of that noise all right now we want to go ahead and render our pass for our car but the thing is we need to go ahead and disable rendering for our background layer so that we're not wasting render time because obviously we're going to render that again later on so go ahead and open up the inspector on the right and the top right change the viewer layer to background and then go to viewer layer properties and turn off use for rendering on the background that way it won't render the background right now and we want to go ahead and change our settings back from our preview settings to our full final settings so under the render tab i'm going to change our samples back to 200 and the resolution back to 100 percent all right, now we are ready to render. So go up to render and hit render animation. This will begin going through every single frame of your project and render only the foreground layer and then save those images to the folder we created earlier. All right, so this is probably going to take quite a while, so I will come back once it's finished. All right, now that that pass is finished, we can go ahead and do the second pass, which will be the shadow layer. But before we go ahead and render, let's go ahead and fix this plane issue. So what you wanna do is select the plane you're using to sort of cast a shadow onto the car and go ahead and find it in the outliner. I think that's actually in my car collection. So yeah, here it is. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out of that. Actually, I haven't named it yet. So let me go ahead and name it shade. And what I'm going to do is hit this little camera icon. And if you don't see this, go ahead and hit the T up here and choose and turn on your restriction toggle for the rendering and go ahead and turn that off. And that will go ahead and stop this shade plane from being rendered. All right, now go ahead and make sure your viewer layer is selected with foreground in the top right, and then go to your viewer layer section and turn off use for rendering, because we don't want to layer the foreground, this time we want to render the background. So go ahead and now change it to the background and go ahead and re-enable use for rendering for the background. Now go ahead and go back over to the compositing tab and we're going to select our denoise and file output and hit shift D to duplicate them and move them up. And we're going to also use them for our background render, render layers. Future Josiah here, I am editing this video and I just noticed a really big problem with what I did here. See these two nodes? Yeah, I duplicated them and what you want to do is delete the old ones. Otherwise it will write over all the images you just rendered with the car layer. Don't ask me how I found that out. Anyway, once you duplicate those nodes, just make sure to delete the old output node for the foreground render layers. So we're gonna select the image, push it to the image, as well as the denoising normal and denoising albedo. And under the output, go ahead and hit the folder and navigate to where you put the first folder with the car images. And we're gonna create a new folder and call it shadow for the shadow pass. Hit accept and go ahead and save it. And just like that, we are ready to render the background layer. So go ahead and go up to render and render animation. This will begin rendering your shadow layer alone and it will save all of those images to that folder just like for our car render pass. This process will also take quite a while because it's got to render all those frames over again, but the shadows instead of the car. So I'll be back when it finishes. <sighs> okay, well, it is now several hours later. As you can see, the sun has left, but the sequence has finally finished rendering. So we now have a folder called render images. And inside of that, we have two more folders, one with the car pass with a bunch of images of just the car. And then the shadow folder with all of our pictures of, you guessed it, 
shadows. So now we need to bring all of these images into your video editor of choice along with your clean plate so we can composite them together. I'm going to be doing this in Final Cut Pro, but there's nothing unique about what I'm doing. Uh, you can do it in any video editing software. So I'm going to go ahead and import all these images into Final Cut Pro as well as my clean plate image sequence. I'm going to go ahead and create a new project with the same resolution and frame rate as my original clean plate. And first off, I'm going to go ahead and just select all the images in my clean plate and put them in. And now what you want to do is make each image one frame long. In Final Cut Pro, you can do this by Control D and then type one, hit enter, and it will uh, adjust all the length of your clips to one frame a piece. I'm not sure how you do this in your other video editing softwares, but I'm sure you can look it up. Um, or some video editing softwares inherently allow importing of image sequences, so they may already be um, movie clips in your case. But basically, you want to get them into a format where each frame, each picture is being displayed for one frame. I'm going to go ahead and select this and hit option G to create a compound clip just to put everything into a nice little section. If we play this through here, we can see we have our uh, video clip playing. It'll be a little choppy because it's playing a bunch of PNG images, which isn't the smoothest playback, uh, but of course it'll be smooth after we export it. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and do the same with my shadow pass and go ahead and select that and drop that in and make a new compound clip out of that and go ahead and put it right on top of my background plate. And as you can see, it tracks perfectly well. All right, now I'm gonna do the same with the car. And now you get to enjoy the fruits of your labor finally and hit play and it should track to the driveway. And looky there, looking pretty good. Honestly, that already looks amazing. It's quite crazy what you can do with free software these days. But I do wanna go ahead and show you guys some tips to make this a little bit more believable. First off, um, in many cases, you'll want to darken your shadow. Sometimes your shadow doesn't render as dark as you want it to be because um, it's a transparent layer here. I would personally leave it alone. I think it looks fine, but let's say you do want to darken your shadow. Because it's a transparent layer, you can actually just copy and paste it and just literally double them. And as you can see, it doubles the darkness. If that's too much, you can select that second one and lower the opacity and sort of adjust how dark that image is. And again, you can continue stacking if it needed to be darker and darker. So for this, um, I'm gonna do something like, I think that looks good. Something kind of in between there. Um, and I think that sort of matches the shadows in the scene. And we can also uh, make sure that our colors are looking the same with our car. I think this looks same. I haven't really applied any color grade to our original footage, but we can go ahead and do that now. So I'm gonna go ahead and add an adjustment layer, which will affect all of the uh, layers below it. If you don't have one of these, you are really missing out. Just search adjustment layer Final Cut Pro. They're really useful. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my adjustment layer, go to my color tab, open up my scopes with command seven. And uh, this is our image is already looking pretty good. What I might do is bring down the midtones just a little bit and then also bring up the highlights. That'll help sort of make the image pop a bit more as well as bring down my shadows just a hair. So doing that adjustment to everything sort of makes everything pop, but also it really helps to sort of blend the car and the scene in together. Now, if for some reason your image had maybe a particular blue cast or maybe you're filming during golden hour and everything's kind of yellowish, you wanna make sure your car affects that. The best way to do that is to match the color of your lighting back in Blender. But if for some reason you get to export and you realize, hey, that doesn't look quite right, just select the car layer itself and make your adjustments. Let's say I wanted it to be brighter, I could brighten up the car. Obviously that doesn't look good here, I think it looks good, but if I needed to, I could do specific adjustments with just the car to make it all look good. Here, I think it looks just fine, so I'm gonna leave most of that stuff alone. That red might be just a bit too punchy, so I might pull out the saturation in the mid-tones just a little bit, as well as in the highlights. Actually, I may leave it up in the details to bring down the highlights. Um, I think that looks a little more realistic because I don't think the red would really be popping that much. Now, if you wanted to, you could add a look grade or a LUT to this, just like you would grade the rest of your videos if you wanted to fit into a movie. Um, but for a test, I honestly think this looks just fine. So I think I'm perfectly happy with the way this turned out. So I'm gonna go ahead and export it as is. And for exporting, you can of course export it however you would normally export any of your other videos, which for YouTube, you should be doing H.264, if you didn't know, and for storage, use ProRes. So this is what my finished animation turned out like. We finally did it. We finished this tutorial series. I am glad to have this done, but I've really enjoyed it. You know, there is a time when I wasn't really enjoying it because it, it is a lot of work, but it's really fun and if you're having trouble making this look realistic, what I would do is 
see if you can find, if you're trying to do a car, see if you can take a video with a real car in a driveway or wherever your location is, and then put a fake car next to it. That way in editing, you can exactly see what the, a real car there would look like and you can try to match that as much as possible. That really helped me when I was first starting out. And honestly, just try it and <laughs> do it a bunch and just, um, Practice. Practice makes perfect. If you enjoyed this tutorial series, please uh, let me know it in the comments and click the thumbs up button and subscribe if you want to see more tutorials like this in the future. I probably won't be doing a blood tutorial for a little bit because I'm a little tired of it, uh, but I've got lots of other tutorials that I'll probably be doing. But if you have anything you'd like to learn in Blender that you haven't found anyone else doing, let me know down in the comments and I would love to tell you how to do it if I know it or maybe y'all want to learn it. I might know means a master of Blender, there's plenty of people out there that are much better than I am, um, but this is just one thing that I've uh, really enjoyed learning and want to share with you guys because I haven't really seen any other tutorials on uh, start to finish how to do the entire um, visual effects uh, compositing process. Well, it is very late and I want to go to bed. So I will see you guys in the next video. I'm Josiah. Thanks for watching. Now it's your turn to go make your friends think you just bought a Ferrari.